Beard and Board is a brewer and hypothetical distiller from the USA. Beaver DIY is an experienced home distiller from South Africa. Today they face off in a spirited international challenge to give each other ridiculous ingredients to work with and see who comes out on top. It's like that show Chop, but with a lot more alcohol. I just said, yes, Okay, kids, like you heard in the intro, Beaver and I are competing in the first ever international distillers competition for YouTubers. Real distilling for him, and of course, hypothetical distilling for me. Beaver is an excellent distiller with about 15 years of experience, and he has a knack for choosing tough ingredients to work with and producing really good results. Plus, he has a fearsome ginger beard, so, you know, that's a bonus. Let's dig right in, shall we? So we exchanged a few emails and came up with a set of rules. Also, we looked at websites for the grocery stores in our respective areas so we'd know what available ingredients the other guy would have to work with. And we set a budget of about $30 US. Here's Beaver with the rules for the competition and the reveal of my surprise ingredients. I'm excited. Are you excited? You have no idea. I've got a plan. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, so uh, we said the specific gravity should be as close as we can get it to a 1.090. Right. You're not allowed to use any additional sugars or anything. You have to use the sugars that comes out of the basket. The ingredients in the basket uh, have to be used in the final product. Then you can add it as flavoring agent, but... Uh, there should be some fermentable stuff in there. Yeah, you can't give me a brick and expect me to make a rum. 20 liters, right? Uh, 20 liter, five gallon for you, 20 liter for me. You're allowed to use water conditioning. So you're allowed to bring your pH down and all the other stuff that you want to. Yeast nutrient, did we say yes on Yeast that? Yeast nutrient, yeah. So whatever you need to add to get the fermentation to kick off, the main rule is just don't add any additional sugars, only use the stuff, yeah? Yeah, there's no limitations on the type of still you're allowed to use the type of method you're allowed to distill at, um, and the whole thing needs to be finished in 10 days. 10 days. Whew. Do you want to make it 15? No, 10 is fine. Mr. Bearded, are you ready? I am ready. So I went a little bit easy on you for your source of sugar. Golden syrup, okay. Is that black molasses? That's molasses. Oh boy. Tomato paste? Pineapple. And then your final ingredient, Chilies. That's exciting. <laughs> what do you think all of this will make if you added it together and not used for distillation? Barbecue sauce? There we go. <laughs> nice, sweet, sticky, sour, and a little bit of heat at the end. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm getting some ideas. Okay. I can't wait. I got to show you yours. Cool, bud. Let's go. I came up with... Uh, with two different lists and I could not decide. So I put it to my patrons and I let them vote on which one you were gonna do. And I'm sorry, dude, but they fucked you up. I, mean, <laughs> I told you on that email they're gonna me up. <laughs> it's my fault for giving them the choice. So you don't get a fancy basket. You get a plate with a dish towel on. There we go. <laughs> All right. Lift your clutch. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. That's what I came up with. Holy shit. Okay. I don't know what the hell you're gonna make. I don't there's no classification for it. If you if you wanna try and go whole hog and throw it into your fermenter, you go right ahead and do it. Because I think if you if you succeed, holy shit, you're gonna be a legend. I'm gonna keep to the rules. That's the plan. <laughs> so if you're curious and you're wondering what the hell ingredients I gave Beaver to use for his fermentation, you gotta check out the link right up here to his video. I highly recommend you check out his whole channel and subscribe like I did, because he has a ton of great content and he's putting out new stuff all the time. I wanna point out here that I gave him two alternate ingredients for him to use that would have been way easier to ferment. But to his credit, he just plowed right ahead with a really, really tough choice. Just for that, Beaver deserves the Balls That Clank award from me. So let's do a quick review of the ingredient list that he gave me. I got golden syrup, molasses. I also had to get some cane syrup because they ran out of molasses. I got some chilies, some tomato paste, 
and some pineapple juice. I'm using juice and juice concentrate here because it's way cheaper than whole pineapple, especially for all the sugar I need. I really wanted to use fresh pineapple, but the uh, golden syrup was an imported item and it kind of blew up my budget, so I didn't have any more room to buy fresh pineapple, so. Mm. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> What's your prediction for the fight, then? Pain. So, Beaver actually gave me kind of a challenging brew. Pineapple juice can be a real dick. It can stall or slow fermentation when you get up into higher gravity values. You remember the melon shine? The problem I had with that? I'm gonna throw everything into my pot and uh, let that simmer for about 20 minutes. It's gonna help to dissolve all the molasses and the golden syrup, so it's all mixed in there really well. The other thing is, that it might do, since this is gonna be kind of an acidic thing, is invert some of the sugars in the molasses. So we'll see if that works. That's probably a mistake. Okay, okay, I wussed out. On second thought, you know, looking at that steeping in there, I was like, I don't want those to cook in there. I want them to ferment in there. I know that if I boil this stuff in there, the flavor is gonna get really, really intense with the heat. I wanna taste everything, you know, <laughs> so. I don't want it to be too overwhelming. I am gonna use all of those chilies, but I'm gonna wait until it's ready to ferment to throw them in. So uh, before I pitch the yeast in here, I just wanted to uh, get some oxygen in here because there is a pretty decent amount of sugar in here and you never know with uh, fruit if it's gonna give you a tough time, especially pineapple or melon. I'm gonna go ahead and give it every advantage with the oxygen. We've got tons of nutrient in here with the tomato paste. So right now, I'm not gonna add any. If it looks like the yeast is having a hard time, then I will. And you saw that I put in the pectic enzyme and that's to get the pectin from the pineapple juice to drop out so that we have a slightly clearer wash. This stuff smells amazing. It smells and tastes like spicy, fruity gingerbread cookies. I think it's a combination of the pineapple and the molasses kind of making me think about gingerbread, but uh, my wife said the same thing. She tried a taste of it and she said it's like spicy gingerbread. I have an incredible sweet tooth, so I could drink this. It's very good. <laughs> All right, so we're done. I think this will ferment out in about a week and then uh, we'll send it off to the liquor ferry. Okay, so the beaver brew has completely stopped. I just took a gravity reading, it's 1.020. So that means either we have a crap ton of unfermentable sugars, which there are unfermentable sugars in molasses, or we're out of nutrient or something else. So. Here's what we got, and you can see all the oil on top. While I had it on the stove on a simmer, the molasses and, and everything started to foam up. So I went ahead and I threw in a couple tablespoons of corn oil. I don't think it really affected the brew. Beaver had much worse to deal with than a couple of tablespoons of oil. So if you see the oil slick, that's why. Not that big a deal though. Anyway, so let's go ahead and check the pH. It looks like our pH is in the threes now. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and raise the pH with some uh, baking soda. See if I can get it up in this range here. So Beaver is way ahead of me. He just finished doing his spirit run. So I am far behind him. But I'm just happy he was able to get his fermented and run because Man, I really screwed him. If we do this again, he's probably gonna make me ferment like a 1986 Toyota or something. <laughs> All right, our pH is good. We've got some nutrient in it. So the rum wash is done. Now it's down to 1.012. So we did lose eight more gravity points and I'm very happy about that. That means that our alcohol yield is gonna be a little bit higher. Now, hypothetically, that rum wash just needs to be run in kind of old style Jamaican rum distilling. The rum is usually pot stilled through a thumper. The good news is we, we built one of those, didn't we? If you didn't know that, here's two videos right up here so that you can see one, how to build it, two, how to use it. Hypothetically, that's what you could do. Just saying. Um, all that pineapple, I'm losing a gallon and a half. A gallon and a half to pulp. It's like soup, let me show you. So, I mean, look at this shit. It's like gravy. There's no way to strain that out. The particulate from the fruit pulp is so fine that it would squeeze through a grain bag. I know because I had to deal with that before in the melon shine, it's a nightmare. That's not something you wanna put into a boiler because it could cook on the bottom of the pot or stick to your element and scorch and ruin the entire thing. But it's a pretty good candidate to go inside of a thumper since there's no direct heat source. Just something to keep in mind. So the pineapple rum, the barbecue sauce rum, is finished. Now I have this uh, bowl of hearts. They've got a little bit of a, a pineapple aroma. You can smell some of the molasses, the sugary notes. And then we've got the tails. The tails are a little bit, a little bit of an interesting story. There was almost no sweetness in the tails until, like the really deep tails. It's just a little bit of funk and some like old stale molasses kind of smell. So I may take a little splash of that up in the in the heads. We've got some molasses flavor up in the in the heads. Big pineapple, like like fresh pineapple, like I just cut one open. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely take some of these two, season that in a little bit. Definitely want some of that pineapple. And there's a little little hint of coconut in there. In the tails, right after the hearts cut, I've got that kind of chili smell, green chilies. I definitely want some of this. Eh, screw it. So I wanna see if I can pull some of those chili flavors in here. And there's a little bit in there. And it's a, it's a top note, it's not a bottom note. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in. I'm getting pineapple, a little bit of banana from somewhere, some of the sugar, a top hint of that chili, and that, for lack of a better term, rum funk. It's, it's hard to explain. I want a little bit more of that. I like that. That's a good rum. I'm picking up a little bit of the chilies, a good hit of that kind of sweet rum funk, the pineapple, banana from somewhere. I think this is excellent. I'm, I'm really happy with this. It was challenging to get it to work, but it produced a fantastic rum. And there's, there's a little something in there from the tomato paste. It's a richness, there's an umami to this. Keeping all that in mind, I kind of want to honor the whole barbecue sauce thing. So you guys want to try and smoke this? I do. You want to win this challenge, right? Let's get weird. So I just drilled out some holes on a mason jar lid, just large enough to fit the air hose. I put two holes in the smoke jar and one in the spirit jar. I've got a piece of hickory. Heat that with your torch until it gets smoking really well. Drop it in your jar. 
and it'll pump that smoke right into your spirit. And just let it run until all the smoke is gone. You can do that several times. And surprisingly, it didn't come out tasting very strong, but give it a little sip after each run, just so you can judge the flavor. All right, so we did the smoking and I ran four cycles. So I think this had roughly about 20 minutes worth of smoke pumped through it. So about five minutes each time. And uh, you can see it's got a very definite color change just from the resins in that wood smoke. Oh yeah, there's a definite smoke on there. Kind of reminds me of barbecue smoke. Yeah, there's a little bit of smokiness in there. I've got a piece of charred hickory. I'm gonna drop that in. You know, normally you just let it sit for a couple of months, but I don't have that kind of time. I am actually behind schedule by a lot. We're gonna try something new. If you notice behind me, I've got an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, my buddy Ken over at Barrel Charwood bought this for me as a gift because he was curious to find out whether or not ultrasonic cleaners would actually help to age a spirit quickly. Full disclosure, he is uh, one of my Patreons and uh, he got this for me to test out for the channel. It does temperature as well as uh, the amount of time. Now you can only set the timer for 20 minutes. So if I want to do it for uh, like, you know, four or five hours or something, I'm gonna have to come back and keep setting it, but that's no big deal. So rum is very often aged on old whiskey barrels. I don't have an old whiskey barrel. However, I do have some oak that has been aging this uh, bourbon. We're gonna go ahead and try a more traditional flavor with this jar. Before we get to the tasting, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for voting on the ingredients that I ended up giving Beaver for this challenge, and for checking out his channel and subscribing. You guys are the reason why I get to do fun stuff like this, so I am very grateful for your help. If you'd like to also help support my channel and get early access to what I do around here and get to vote on ingredients that I use to torture other YouTubers, check out the link to my Patreon page down in the video description. Okay, so the smoking is done and the ultrasonic uh, cleanser vibrating bath, that's all done. I don't know if there's any toxic problems with passing smoke through your, through your spirit. Uh, do your own research, make your own informed decisions. Let's take a look at these guys. So that's the raw spirit. That is the result after about like an hour and a half in the ultrasonic bath. So 20 minutes, like six times. It's got some really nice amber color to it. This is charred American white oak. It's been soaked in bourbon for about four months. And I put that in there. So I ran these two guys in the bath to, to vibrate at 155 degrees. So let's give them a taste. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Glen Cairn glass because believe it or not, the shape of the glass actually does matter. And this is the only piece of snobbery I have along with my used McDonald's straw for pipetting the liquid. I'm gonna put some of these down in the video description if you wanna get some, because I guarantee you can take your spirit from a wide mouth glass in one of these and it's gonna smell different. I'm telling you. Wow. You know, before it had a little bit of the, uh, the hickory smoke, it smelled like, like you were standing uh, sort of near a plate of barbecue. Now, I will say that it's stronger, but it's not like campfire. It almost smells salty, like salty barbecue. I've had, you know, peated whiskey. I've, I've had stuff that had a, a heavy smoke character to it, but this is something different. I kind of like it. I was aiming to turn this into something that kind of reminded me of barbecue sauce. And honestly, I think I nailed it. The smoke is not nearly as strong as I thought it was going to be, but the, the flavor of the wood 
is. It's definitely in there. If you didn't tell me that this was in an ultrasonic cleaner, I would assume by tasting it, by the, the color and the aroma and the flavor, that it was at least three months on that wood, maybe four. Yeah, it smells like a, a light rum with barbecue. That's kind of cool. Okay, so uh, let's come up with a barbecue themed rum cocktail. I, I am not a mixologist. I'm terrible at coming up with drink ideas. If you guys have any ideas for this, uh, put them down in the comments section. I think I'm gonna take the hickory out and throw in some either mulberry or cherry and do another blast in the ultrasonic cleaner to see if I can infuse some flavor that way. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for the new toy, because very awesome. I'm not sponsoring the brand of, of cleaner. There's like a million of them on Amazon for the exact same price, but I'll put a link for the one I use down in the description if you want it. But the wood that Ken does and the customer service of his company, that is why I keep talking about him. Um, I'll put a link for him down in the video description as well. So let's try the oak. That has the aroma of a very, very young aged rum. On this small amount of used wood, I would almost expect you to need to age it for like three years to get um, the richness and uh, develop some of the barrel candy. It still smells pretty close to the new make with a little, little hint of the, the whiskey in there. Oh, that's really good though. That's that's really good. That's gonna make a fantastic rum. The pineapple is still there, the molasses is still there. The chili has dialed down a lot. I barely even know it's there. Like if you didn't tell me it was there, I wouldn't know. It's a very nicely rounded rum. It's just gonna need a lot more time on it. I think this has enough hickory, so I'm gonna swap that out with some cherry. I love you. <laughs> and then uh, put both of them back in for another hour and a half to three hours. I'll check them after another hour and a half. I am really happy with these guys and I've also got these two guys. I think I'm gonna do some experiments with rum dunder because I happen to have some at my disposal now. So as much as I like my rum and I'm proud of my rum, and I'm gonna call Beaver the winner of this one because um, I broke the rules. I did. I went over the 10 day timetable. I got, I got caught up in some other stuff and Beaver has been waiting very patiently for me for the last two months. I am so glad I got to work with him. He's a really fun guy. I hope you guys check out his channel. Both of us are hoping that, that other distillers will kind of see what we did here and, and want to try it out too. Either with us or with other folks, it doesn't matter because I think the, uh, the more connected our community is, both hypothetical distillers like me and real distillers like Beaver and Jesse, the more we can, as Jesse says, make this a legitimate hobby, the better. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button, because it really helps out my channel. And I mean that, it really does. If you're not subscribed to my channel, but you enjoy this content, you should go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new content. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them in the comments section down below. And don't forget the link right up here so you can see what crazy ingredients I gave Beaver to work with. I just have a uh, post-challenge interview to do. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later. Bearded, how was your challenge? How do you think you did? Well, uh, he threw some serious punches. <laughs> you know, the pH kept dropping. <laughs> you dirty motherfucker. <laughs> and the damn wash completely stalled. That was bad. <laughs> and then I almost lost a third of my wash to the uh, the pineapple sludge down at the bottom. I know I gave him some serious competition when I threw that at him. He had to sparge it seven times. I'm just glad we both got some good drinks out of it because 
I really need one.